Hello, gang. Okay, it's nice to see some familiar faces. Hey, Philippe, long time no see. Oh, hi, Luke. Thank you for reaching out to me. My boys are excited. We will talk. Hey, John Sebastian. Hey. Hello, David. Great to see you. Hey. Oh, this is great. Maura, hello. Nice to see you here. All right. So, hi, gang. I'm going to start chatting. People will join us in the next few minutes, I'm sure. And um, what I'd love if you would do is in the, I'll keep you muted for a moment, but in the chat box on the side, if you would say um, where you are, it's fun to just get a sense of where in the world we all are right now. Uh, at this moment, it, it, it's easy to feel disconnected and connected at the same time. It's kind of weird with this sense of uh, being separated, but having technology to connect us. So it's awesome seeing all different places already all around the world. Um, yeah, thank you. Thanks, Julia. Thanks, Julia. So oh, let me start by telling a couple of funny things. Uh, here's a distinction. Action over perfection. Uh, it's so easy to try and want to have everything be perfect, get it all together, have it all right. But right now, the distinction that is really serving me the most is action over perfection. Uh, I got on uh, uh, my phone last night to send a video message to a uh, a client to check in see how they're doing and after I'd sent the message and it was on iMessage so it's not like whatsapp where you can delete it I realized oh that smoothie my wife just gave me uh, before I made the call had all these little bits of fruit that was chopped up in it and inside all my teeth were bits of fruit and seeds and stuff um, but you know what I made a call to a client what I don't want you to know about me is that I decided I was thinking the other day, what am I going to do? Am I going to let my hair just grow because I can't go to the barber every two weeks? Or am I going to use the clippers I have at home to cut my own hair? I can do this. It can't be that complicated. I looked up a YouTube video. I'm not silly. I know I do a bit of research. I get the clippers out. I start doing my own hair. And it's great on the sides until I get to this bit where apparently blending it in is a lot harder than, than you'd think. And so um, uh, it's grown out a little bit right now, so it's not quite so bad, but um, I, try, I, I try and as I do videos, stay a little bit <laughs> looking in that direction because this bit didn't quite blend in the same way that way it did. You know what? I took action, I did something, I didn't sit doing nothing. And that's, that's uh, really important for all of us right now where it can be easy to be in overwhelm. It can be easy to uh, have so much it feels like we need to do that we don't do anything, we freeze. And I, I spoke about this on a, uh, a webinar I did a couple of weeks ago now. Who else has this feeling that it's like every day is the same as like Groundhog Day, but at the same time, so much has happened in, in, in 10 days or less. And I have that feeling time is very strange right now, right? Yeah. So I think it was about 10 days ago, even two weeks ago, where I did this webinar. Um, and again, it wasn't perfect. Some of you might have been on it. Uh, there were some people on the call who haven't, I think my kids came in, uh, there was noise outside. Uh, two people at least hit the share screen button on, on, on Zoom and it shared their entire screen with everybody. Now, fortunately they didn't hit the button and then leave the room. Otherwise I had, cause I had no idea how to remove that. Uh, it didn't matter. In fact, it was a great example of how in real time I could cope with challenging moments. And one of the reasons I've realized that I'm coping, look, I'm human, I have my moments when I go up and down, moments when I feel afraid for my mother or things like that. Um, I get worried for myself and my family. But one of the reasons in business, I'm coping well, is we're always reinventing in my business. I'm always making new stuff up. Most of the things that we do right now didn't exist a couple of years ago. So I'm always creating new things. And when you're always creating that innovation from the inside, when it happens from the outside, you're not thrown quite so much. So what I'd love to do today, this, this is a call I'm putting on every week for, for the near future. We said till the end of April, I sense it might be a bit longer, we'll see. Uh, it, for anyone who's ever been a client of mine, anyone's ever come to any intensive ever, uh, anyone who's ever bought a program from us ever, we just thought, well, how can, how can I really serve my people, my community? And, and these calls are now here for you every week. We can check in with one another. 
what I'd love to make these calls about is you. I can teach some ideas and distinctions, but I'd love to know what's going on for you right now. So the chat box on the side, if you can put into a single sentence, if possible, uh, what's one thing that you'd like some support on or coaching on right now? And I'll, I'll do my best to see how many of these I can get through in the next hour. So again, be concise because that makes it easier for me. Uh, sometimes we get a lot of people responding, but I'll, um, let me just hide that screen. Um, I'll go through this with each of you or as many of you as I can in this moment. Whilst you are, are, are writing, let me share a distinction I learned a couple of days ago. I was watching an interview, Stephen Kotler, who wrote the book, The Rise of Superman, did an interview with a former Navy SEAL and uh, a neuroscientist. And he drew a distinction. He said, fear is anxiety plus uncertainty. Anxiety plus uncertainty. And the moment you distinguish those two, you're able to, if you know anything about me, I've taught in distinctions, coached around distinctions for years, because the moment you have a distinction, you have more power over a situation. If fear equals anxiety plus uncertainty, well, you have anxiety when you're about to give a speech, when you're gonna launch a new coaching program, you're gonna coach a new client for the first time. You have uncertainty when you don't know what's gonna happen out into the future. You can handle those two separately and then the fear will reduce. So anxiety, if you're anxious, take five deep breaths, really at a minimum five deep breaths and your body will begin to shift. In fact, when you are relaxed, your body breathes deeply, naturally. So you can trick your system by breathing deeply, your body will relax. There are all sorts of other things you can do to get a sense of calm. You can meditate, you can go for a walk, um, you can get a cuddle from someone you love. Uh, there's all sorts of things you can do to reduce anxiety. In simple terms, Google it if you don't, if you don't know what to do. Uh, but, but five deep breaths, if nothing else, will help to reduce anxiety. How do you reduce uncertainty? Well, there's a number of things you can do to reduce uncertainty. Here's one. Every night before you go to bed, write down one to three things you're going to accomplish tomorrow. And when you wake up in the morning, do those things, if possible, first. You want to reduce unc unc uncertainty? Pick one thing to do and then reduce it to the tiniest possible step and do that. The moment you can separate out anxiety and uncertainty, you're back in control, even if it's for the next 60 seconds, and then the fear goes away. I thought it was a beautiful distinction. Um, any of you who are not already in, there's a Facebook group we created called Serve, Lead, Serve, which I put out to, to the community of coaches that I, that I lead and organically it's just filling with people just put serve lead serve or go to my facebook uh, feed and, and look down a couple of posts um and i'll i'll, I'll uh, click to request to enter and we'll let you in 1500 people have joined us in the last 10 days and e almost every day i'm in there serving sharing distinctions and ideas to support coaches all right hi amina nice to see you here well, let's see what, you, what we got um Okay, Julia says, how do I stay productive and purposeful at this time of chaos? Well, it, it really goes back to what I just shared, that distinction around fear being anxiety versus uncertainty. Um, how do I stay productive and pur purposeful? F forget about productivity for a moment. Check in with purpose. Why are you really here? What's your mission? I, I know for me that my, my mission is that over the next 25 years, I'm curating a community of fascinating people. They're mostly coaches, mostly leaders, but that's my mission. So anything I can do that is serving the community of fascinating people I love gets me back in purpose. So number one, get in touch with why are you really here? What's important to you? Put that first. And I, I recommend writing that down on a piece of paper, put it on your computer and put it on your nightstand. So when you wake up, when you go to the office, or whatever your home computer is, when you um, go to bed at night, you get back in touch with why you're really here. Then from that place, again, forget about productivity. Think about what's one thing I'd love to do? What's, who's one person I'd love to serve? 
Some of you have been at my intensives know that we have these bracelets we give out sometimes that have two words on. It says serve, create. That's all it says, serve, create. And when you've either served one person or created something interesting, you turn the bracelet over and there's a little check mark on the back. You're done for the day. That's true in normal times, it's true in challenging times. Don't worry about being productive. Who can I serve? What can I create? And who can I serve can be as simple as what I did last night. I thought of a client who, who meant something to me. I picked up my phone and sent them a 20 second video message. Who can I serve? What can I create? This morning, 7 a.m. my time, who can I serve? It's everyone who chose to be on this call right now. Thanks, Julia. Uh, Uros says, Rich, I have trouble seeing coaching as a business, especially these days. I feel like a war profiteer. Yeah. You know, if you had a, a, a way to source N95 masks and you tripled the price, if you had uh, uh, medical resources that are needed right now and you started selling them, for 10 times what they're worth in normal times, you'd be a war profiteer. If you can serve people because you're a coach or a consultant or a trusted advisor, well, in good times, in good times, we need guidance and advice. And we need it more so in challenging times. I hired a new coach last week. I gotta walk my talk. If I believe in this stuff, then I gotta walk my talk. Am I willing to invest in this thing that I'm asking other people to invest in? And the truth is, yes, I am. I realized I'm in a business mastermind right now that isn't serving me. That doesn't, I mean, it's valuable. It's not what I need right now. I need someone who once a week I can get on a call with and I can share where I'm struggling, what's overwhelming me, what I want to create, where I'm stuck. And I hired a new coach last week and we had one call and in 15 minutes, I was done. I mean, we talked for another 15 minutes, but, but I said, I, I'm done. And, and in some ways I was actually, I think I was really talking to make him feel okay. <laughs> I'd have, I got my money's worth in 15 minutes. So you don't, don't see coaching as a business right now. See coaching as service. Create so much value for people that some of them say, how do I get more? And for those people, you say, well, these are the ways I work with people. These are the prices. It's as simple as that. And, and here's the distinction that's interesting in what Euro said. I have trouble seeing coaching as a business especially in these days. It's the word especially that has a little red flag uh, come up for me. It gives me a clue that maybe that's true even in normal times. And so even in normal times, Uros, you've got to get past that story. Coaching is a business if you, if you want it to be. It doesn't have to be. For some coaches, they're just there to serve and it's part of what they do. But for those of us who want it to be what helps to create our lifestyle and, and take care of our families, we have to see it as a business. And even in challenging times, get out there, serve people, create value. And when people ask for something, how, do you, how to get more of it, don't hold back in telling them. Okay, Russ? Thanks, man. See ya. Um, David, for, for us that are doing really well, how to navigate when everyone else is struggling? Oh, David, I love that you asked that question. I, I'm writing an article right now about, about five of the people I, I know, my clients, and that there are more, but five people who have got amazing stories about the difference they're making, the money they're generating. I got on a call with my bookkeeper the other day. She told me one of her clients has doubled his business in the last uh, two months and nothing, and it hasn't stopped. I love those stories. That's inspiring to me, David. I love that you're making a difference. Um, is anyone tired of all the negative news out there that it's really hard to get away from all the negative news? Is anyone interested and in inspired by the fact that David is successful right now? Does that give you a sense of inspiration? I, I'm excited by that. David, there'll be some people who get exasperated or frustrated by that because they can't do that right now. There are some people who are, I've got clients who, uh, who, who are struggling. Uh, one of my clients had to take a little boy to hospital last night because he's, uh, you know, I think you know who that is. Oh no, maybe you haven't met that person. Um, because uh, he, he had to go for an operation last night. Uh, uh, one of my clients who used to work at Google and is now a private coach lives in Italy. And she mentioned that one of her clients is a doctor on the front lines in Italy. And she, she said kind of as an aside, oh, and he's a big fan of yours, Rich. So I said, well, 
how would you like me to get on a call with you and him and I'll coach him? And she said, oh my God, that would be amazing. There are people who are struggling in all sorts of ways right now, but that you're not is not something you should carry guilt about. It's really inspiring, David. Anything you want to say to that, David? Um, well, thank you. Um, Michelle uh, came with a really nice, um, because I think it's a little bit challenging in regards to like, I have all of these testimonial stories that I shot just before this. And I feel like it's not the time to really share about success, but this is, as Michelle said, this is what we prepared for. You know, this is when I think a lot of us actually feel calm um, because we're so well prepared to all of these different scenarios. Um, but I don't think, I don't want people to feel that I'm sort of taking advantage of the situation, but I think this is a great time for everyone to really think about what we're doing and how we're serving and getting really specific and clear. I, so. I read last night, David, there was some billionaire, I've forgotten his name, who posted a photo of himself on his yacht, on his massive yacht, and, and saying, you know, I hope everyone's okay, but it's nice to be able to get away from the, 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 the chaos on my <laughs> multi-million dollar yacht. And of course he got torn yeah. apart on, on Twitter, you know, you selfish man, you know, help do make a difference. That's not you. The reason that you're doing so well is you spent years serving people and creating value for them. Am I right? Yeah, of course. Well, it's not an of course in your mind, which is why you're asking the question. So <laughs> drawing it out from you. Yeah. And the reason you're still doing well is you're still serving people and creating value for them. Am I right? Yes. And so there's no need to have any guilt over that at all. Like I say, you're not doing something that's showing off about your wealth when people are struggling and you're not doing something that's taking advantage of the situation like selling ventilators for 10 times the, the market price. You're <laughs> serving people and creating value. That's it, period. Keep doing it. And when people ask, can I have more of your support? And you can say, well, look, like this, I'm, I'm doing this for no charge, serving as many people as I can. 1,500 people on a Facebook group, I'm in every day serving as powerfully as I can. Don't make any money from that. And some people are coming to me to have conversations about how can I join this program? How can you be my coach? How can... And then I can serve them. It's really bizarre being in a position where you're hiring people when everyone else is firing. So I do think it's really... No, let me, let me draw a distinction. It's really important. Mm. The word everyone is not correct. There are many people making lots of hires right now. There are many people investing in all sorts of ways. There are many people hiring coaches right now and consultants and trusted advisors. The majority, no. But the majority of coaches are struggling at the best of times. The majority of coaches don't make more than about 20 grand a year. So don't compare yourself with the news, with the bad news, with, with the, the, the average coach. You're an extraordinary man who's done extraordinary things for a long time. Thank you. Thanks, man. Um, I see, let's see who's next. Thanks, David. Um, Sarah, Sarah Clark says, knowing the right time is to offer my services on LinkedIn. Well, there's, there's no right answer to that if, if we put that into the form of a question. There's no right answer at the best of times. But uh, right now, find a way to be of service. What can you do that creates value on LinkedIn? What can you write? What can you create? How can you serve people? Uh, uh, put LinkedIn to one side, but all social media to one side. Who is one person that you can serve right now? Can you do what I've done on this call? Like my community might be larger than yours, but if you've had even three people you've coached in the past, you call them up and you say, hey, Fred, I was thinking of you. How's life? It's been a while since we coached together. Do you want some support right now? Do you want to jump on a call? And what I, what I would recommend you offer is not do you want to jump on a call for two hours, Whilst that's the prosperous coach approach, in this moment when people are overwhelmed, make it really easy for people to say yes. Hey, it's been six months since we've spoken and I was thinking of you. Do you want to jump on a call for 15 minutes? After 15 minutes, I promise you'll leave with a sense of clarity and a sense of confidence and you'll have one tiny step you can take at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. If that's of interest, message me back. And if it's not, I'm, 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 I wish you all the best. 15 minutes, offer them 15 minutes and take 30 seconds to make the offer. Really slow it down to one person at a time. 
uh, on one level, as I'm talking out loud, I'm thinking, you know, forget LinkedIn, go back to the people you know, and then go to the people you don't know. Um, I, I see Rod asks next, how can I make coaching an essential service? You don't have to make it an essential service. It is. You've got to find one person who you can serve and, and always start by going to the people you know. Go back to the people who've paid you in the past, been clients of yours in the past, been pro bono clients, it doesn't matter. Start there. Then the next time you're talking to your sister-in-law and, and, and she says, well, how's it going? How's life? Well, it's good. Right now, I'm stuck at home. And you know what I'm doing? Every Friday at 9 a.m., I'm blocking out 15 minutes for someone who's, and then you describe your ideal client, who's a business owner, who's an entrepreneur, who's a consultant, who's, who, who works in this field. And I'm blocking out 15 minutes and I'll spend 15 minutes with people who, who are not even my clients or they'll leave with a sense of clarity and confidence and they know exactly what to do at nine o'clock on Monday morning. And they go quiet. Because if your sister-in-law says nothing, it's okay, it wasn't for her. But you'll be surprised that when you say, this is what I'm doing, people go, oh, could I have one of those sessions? Or, ah, oh, my former boss would really value that right now. Okay, let him know. So don't make coaching an essential service. It is, you have to know that. You have to believe that. It's why I just invested with a new coach for myself, because I do now believe it. And it's easy for me to ask someone to, to spend money working with me right now, because I've just spent one, money, got, I got my money's worth for the entire coaching program in 15 minutes. If I didn't speak to him again, I'm good. So it's about the value you can create for one person at a time. All right, you guys doing okay? I'd love to see post below. Oh my God, the, the messages are stacking up now. Um, post below, because I want to keep this interactive. Post below um, an insight you've had from anything that's happened so far. Because if you sit here just waiting for the right piece of information, um, it's not going to engage you so much as if you check in, oh, what's an insight? What's a takeaway? And it, I'm not attached to being right. If your insight is, oh, no, Rich is wrong. Here's what I can do in LinkedIn. Then great, that's awesome. I'm not attached to being right. I coach around insight. Oh, hi, Gina. Yeah, I feel for you. Beginning to feel the isolation as one who, who lives alone. I, I really feel for you, Gina. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's challenging, uh, I imagine, to be, to be someone who lives alone right now. Um, <laughs> and there are moments when having uh, two kids and a wife at home, I crave a little bit of alone time. It's quite hard to get it right now. But I, I also feel for you. Um, my wife was feeling that. My wife is an extrovert. And uh, so she, you know, I feel like I've been training for this my whole life. <laughs> Six <laughs> feet away from people and staying in my own home. <laughs> I, I, I'm ready for that. Monique was thinking, well, how could she connect? And, and who does she really want to connect with? And so what, what she's, she realized is there's something that's missing for her, for women of color. That's who she is. And she wanted to create something where her tribe, her community to get together. So she wrote on Facebook and to her list, you know, she's a musician, but she wrote to her, her people and said, hey, if you are a woman of color, if you know one, then every Saturday I'm doing a Zoom call to look at and talk through the unique challenges that we face. And they get on a Zoom call, they have a little breakout group so they can talk in smaller groups. And she created that. And so um, I say that to you for, for two reasons, Gina. One, what is it that you could create that might be really interesting for you and who's the community for you? And, and two, by chance, that may be an interesting group for you if you don't already know about it. I don't know about that group, but I'm gonna find it. <laughs> um, you know what, I, and I have two groups of friends they're not clients, but just people that are important to my life that we meet over Zoom. And I'm an introvert, so I'm like you, kind of like time alone is a, a cool thing, except that it's so much time. Um, and I actually just miss real contact with real people. And I, I can't find a real substitute for that. So the days are really long because that time was broken up by travel, by doing things with lots of, you know, friends and people that I'm close to, and and I'm really um, sheltering at home. So it, it's just I don't know a barrier over that other than maybe joining another Zoom group. But it's 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 kind of a painful loneliness, and and usually that doesn't affect me because I have all the other activity. 
yeah, it's, it's new for all of us. And so I feel for you, there's, there's no magic answer to this one. Yeah. One of my sons uh, is really missing his, he's eight, really missing his friends, but he's tired of Zoom calls. It doesn't bring the same thing that it does. Right. So I feel yeah. for you. Um, um, who else is feeling a sense of loneliness at times? Even the introverts in us, I'm, I'm feeling, I'm missing my friends right now. Um, yeah, so you're not alone. Um, uh, go to Monique's page, Monique Debose on Facebook and you'll find her, her group she puts it in there. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and to that aside, just for everyone else, that idea that my wife had of, you know, who's my unique community? And what's the unique thing they're struggling with right now? So for Monique, it's women of color. And there's really unique things that they're going through that others wouldn't be going through. And some of them are general that would be applicable to all, but it feels really good to be with your tribe. Who's your tribe? And the narrower you can go, the more interesting that is for your people to say yes to you. Because right now, how many of you are overwhelmed with offers to join another Zoom call, another group, uh, have your Facebook feed full of coaches and consultants offering all this stuff to help you? So the narrower you can go, the more interesting this will be for them and for you. Thanks, Gina. Um, let me have a look down the list here. Um, some of the questions you guys have put have already answered in different ways. Um, Kelly asks a great question. Um, uh, I find myself mo mostly focused on tasks for existing clients and days fill quickly with calls at the same time. So I found myself not having much time for creation or reflection and I'm not reaching out to new prospects. Well, it's always important to put creation and reflection time on your calendar and more so than ever before. So you simply have to put that on your calendar, Kelly. It's more important in some ways than uh, uh, just serving your clients right now. Uh, whatever that time is for you, whether it's early in the morning, it's late in the afternoon, put creation time on your calendar, put reflection time on the calendar, put serving people who are not my current clients on your calendar. Uh, I, I do that in, in normal times. Most of you know, if you've read The Prosperous Coach, I have two colors on my calendar, red and blue. It, it's red, uh, it's blue if it's a current client, it's red if it's someone who's not a, a client of mine. You wouldn't know the difference if you were filming or listening in, I'm just serving them and coaching them, but I'm always creating time. If there's too much blue on my calendar, I might have a lot of money because I've signed up a lot of clients, but in a few days or weeks or months, they're gonna finish and there'll be no one else to serve. So you've got to put those on your calendar. Um, yes, yeah, uh, same for you, Maura, ask a similar question. You've got to get this balance right. It's, there's no perfect answer how to get the balance, but it's, it's serving uh, people who are your current clients and serving people who are not your clients and getting a mix of the two on your calendar. Uh, but there's, there's no magic way for this. H here's the only thing I'd offer is, a week is sometimes too short a time frame. 90 days is a really good time frame because you can't every single week uh, put time on to serve uh, five people who are not clients, your 10 current clients, to spend time doing the, the bookkeeping or the numbers. Uh, spreading that out over time allows you to relax a little bit. And we all had to have a much longer term focus right now. Uh, it, you can't always sign clients. I mean, the best of times you don't sign clients in the short term. You have to have a long term focus. So even more so now. Uh, Aaron asks a great question. Aaron wants to create one client who's working directly on COVID-19 initiatives. For example, a tech company sourcing masks for hospitals. Um, I think that's great, uh, Aaron. Uh, you're the right person to do that. Um, I just read a blog last night by Alex Danko, D-A-N-C-O. I don't know if you know him. Um, he he uh, writes interesting stuff about innovation and technology and just read, wrote a post on a couple of his clients who are uh, big tech companies who are transforming their businesses to make a difference right now. Now he's looking for funding for those and support for them from VCs, but you've got to use your creativity, start looking out for who might need other support right now and how can you reach out? And this might be cold reach outs. Hey, so-and-so, um, I saw you're the, you know, and you, you do your research, you, you look up the company, you look up the CEO, uh, you look up some of the senior leaders in the company. You look up their Facebook profile because sometimes you discover, oh, we're, we're one friend apart. And then you reach out or you ask your community, first of all, like, does anyone know this person? 
And then you reach out and say, hey man, I'm just thinking of you. I see you're raising money right now because it's an amazing initiative you have. I can't help you with that, but here's what I can help you with. And I'm talking to Aaron because I know him. I coach leaders in the tech world. It's where I came from. And here's what happens. People spend 15 minutes with me and they leave with a sense of clarity, a sense of confidence, and one single thing they can do at nine o'clock tomorrow morning to help the business. If that's of interest, I'm blocking out time every Friday morning at nine o'clock. We can have a 15 minute call, let me know. But if that's not for you, or, or if for one of your senior leaders, let me know. You got it? Good, Aaron? Okay, great. Great. Um, you guys notice I'm using the same line each time right now, this idea about, because I'm, I'm thinking about my people. Your, your people might be different, but I know the people I work with want a sense of clarity right now. They want a little more confidence they had five minutes earlier. And if they knew just one thing they could do at nine o'clock tomorrow morning, they'd have a sense of calm. Um, so you might have different wording for your people. Uh, um, David Taylor Klaus says, um, I've noticed over the last week, you put me in front of someone or a group in service mode and I'm on and my energy is engaged and I'm in flow. Who knows that one? The rest of the time, I feel like the overall riding desire is to curl up in a ball. Who knows that one? And then he says, the vacillation is exhausting. Who knows that one? That's great. So, yeah. Um, the reason I called the Facebook group we created Serve, Lead, Serve, is it dawned on me that your number one mission right now is to serve. Initially, I called it Serve, Serve, Serve. Just be out there in service. And there's a truth to that. But I changed the name to Serve, Lead, Serve. Because number one, your number one mission is to serve yourself. What can you do to take care of you? And sometimes you do need to curl up in a ball or watch Netflix or zone out, whatever it is. Serve yourself first, then get back into leadership. Where can I make a difference? What can I do? Who can I serve? And then get back into serving your clients, get back into serving two layers deep, your client clients, um, but get back into service. Serve yourself first, then, then lead and then serve. So take, take, take care of you, David. You've been really working hard to really be there for other people. Take, take care of yourself. Uh, Diane says, I created a meetup in December. What's the best way to create one-on-one -on -one client from members? Uh, everything I just said, Diane, uh, go back to those people and say, hey, how's things? One at a time, reach out to them. It's got to be personal. It's not a generic email to the 5, 10, 20 people who came. One person, hey, 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 Paula. I was thinking of you. I remember the thing that you worked on at our meetup was this issue. How's that going right now? Take, take 60 seconds or just give me one sentence about how you're doing. Make it easy for them to reply. And I, I still, I recommend this. Don't use email right now. Our email inboxes are packed. Every company I've ever hired in the last 15 years is sending me their COVID policy right now. Um, and and uh, every coach I've ever met is trying to sign me up to some program. It, it, don't use email. Um, I found the simplest thing is your, your phone. You, you pick up your phone, you make a 20 second video and you send them a little video message and it creates curiosity. Our, our, we're all at home. So our, our text messages are, are blowing up right now. But you get a little video message. You can't help but wonder what's it about. It's a text. You read the first line and you think I'll get back to it later. So video and you make it really short and tight. 15, 20 seconds. One person at a time. Um, Kim says, the anxiety of the world has penetrated the management of my corporate job and I'm working harder and longer than ever in this time when more people are slowing down. I find myself coaching my management through this on top of my regular deliverables, trying to figure out how to manage it all. Yeah, well, go back to serve, lead, serve, Kim. First of all, take care of you. What can you do today to take care of you? What can you do tomorrow morning? To take care of you. I've got this practice I've taken on now. The moment I wake up, I have to take five deep breaths and think of five things I'm grateful for. Because you know what I want to do the moment I wake up? <laughs> it's probably the thing that most of you want to do is reach for my phone. And the other thing I'm doing is a, 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 a negative practice, a not practice, is 
I don't read the news before lunch. And I try and read the news only once a day. And I definitely, I do not watch any TV news. TV news gets paid by you staying on over the adverts. So they have to create a crisis or something that's so shocking and scary that, oh my God, what's the answer gonna be after the adverts? So take out that anxiety from your life, create some simple practices for you. Um, I, and serve, lead, serve. I love that you're getting back into leading your management through this on top of your regular deliverables. That's great. And differentiate right now. Where are you called the most? What's most important? Whilst you can serve all those other people, maybe for you in this particular job you're in right now for the next, let's call it one week, let's make time frame short. For the next seven days, your only job is to work on those deliverables. Really work on that for, and you can come back to serving others in a week. What if you slowed it down to that? Maybe it's the other way around. Maybe, you know what, put the deliverables to one, deliverables to one side. I'm gonna spend the next seven days and I'm gonna serve my ass off for the entire management team. I'm gonna let them know the skills that I have that they've got no clue about. And I'm gonna serve them. Get really clear what's the most important and then focus on that. It's the 80-20 rule. The 80-20 rule says that 80% of your results come from 20% of the things that you do. And so what are the 80% of things you can cut out right now so that you can focus on those 20% of things, whether that's personally and, and, and on, on your own personal life or in the, the world that you're in. I acknowledge I'm, I'm going a little bit fast for you guys here, but I've got so many things here I wanna, I wanna check in. And so let me practice what I just said. Let me slow down. Because here's where I'm being caught. My little message thread says 99 plus new messages, which means it's gone over 100 and they've stopped telling me how, how many. And some of this is you sharing your insights or responding to a, a colleague or a friend. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna catch myself. I don't have to go through every one of these 99 responses. So I, you can see in real time, I'm making myself take a deep breath, I'm slowing down. I've got, I've put this green powder in my drink to try and feel a bit healthier and take a sip of water. Hmm. There you go, in real time, I practice what I'm teaching. Slow down, slow down to speed up. Let me see what else we've got here. Okay, Philippe has got a great question. How do you handle the mindset? I'm hearing from CEOs and peers. There's too much going on. This isn't the time for coaching. Let's check back in when things calm down. Uh, yeah. Who, who else has been hearing that one? I see Julia nodding. Uh, there's a bunch of you. Yeah, that's great. So again, you have to get this from the inside out. Are you seeking support right now? Are you actually practicing this, taking time out? for reflection time, taking out for being coached yourself. I don't care if it's a peer coach, if it's somebody you pay, are you taking out time to walk your talk on this so you know the truth of it? If all you're doing right now is thinking, how can I get clients? How can I be out there and just all, all is output and there's no input for you, then you're walking the same walk that they are. That's the first thing. The second thing is, Make any offer you make really, really small. So I'm talking about this idea about 15 minutes. Where's there 15 minutes of value I can create for somebody? There's only three questions I ask people these days, whether they're clients or friends, just three questions. How's it going? Or sometimes I'll say, what's on your mind? So you could go and sit down with the CEO and say, how's it going? What's on your mind? Tell me what's the top of your mind right now. They'll just talk. <laughs> <laughs> they just dive straight into it. They'll tell you what's on their mind in that moment. How's it going? Then I ask this question. What's your biggest challenge right now? Sometimes I phrase it because I got this from a, a, a finance person who was helping me the other day. And she said, what's the number one risk to your business right now, Rich? And I was with my bookkeeper at the time. And my bookkeeper said, she answered first. And she said, well, it's going to be getting new clients right now. And I, I just, I knew on the inside, I knew that wasn't it. It's not the biggest risk to my business right now. The biggest risk to my business is if I don't take care of me. And that was it. That one, what's the biggest risk to your business is a fantastic question because I've got the answer quickly. And I know I've got to start taking care of me better. Who's been eating more junk food than they normally eat? Who's been snacking on chips and cakes and ice cream? Who's been doing working, who's been working out less than they normally work out? Uh, yeah, me too. And so I've got to, get back into, I knew that's the biggest risk to my business right now. What's on your mind? Question number one. 
What's your biggest challenge? And then, do you want some help with that? Do you want some help with that? They'll tell you. Do you want some help with that? I, in, in five minutes, I can help you with that. And make it as small as possible. Hey, hey, something you just said, boss. Something you just said, CEO. Do you want some help with that? Because there's something that I, I work with people on that can shift that in five minutes. All you need is a yes to five minutes. They do want help. They know they want help. But in this world of generic coaching, that's not exciting to them. Nobody wants coaching. They do want help. You want some help with that? Five minutes, that's all we need. Don't worry about, can you get anywhere in five minutes? You don't have to be magic in five minutes. If you give them five minutes where you ask one more question or you give them a chance to talk for five more minutes, they might want five more. You just want them to say yes and open the door. Thanks, Rich. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Philippe. Thanks. For, uh, how does that land for you and for your, for your people right now? It, it lands really well. I, I think in the uh, offers to some of the CEOs that I'd been talking with, I tried to offer something that would be helpful and also free from a place of service, but I think I was still making it too big for them to process in the moment. So this idea of making it even smaller yeah. so that they can say yes is a really helpful insight. So I'm gonna uh, integrate that into conversations with people who are managing organizations, but also just everyone day to day, we're all feeling overwhelmed. So yeah, past clients. Past clients, friends, how's life? What's your biggest challenge right now? Because they might say, and it's nothing you can do anything about. I can't help Gina that, that she's alone right now. There's not much I can really do. Um, but you never know. I, I had that idea. Oh, hey, Monique has a, a group that might be of interest to you, actually, Gina. Just that I'm not coaching her. There was one idea. But I might have just said, there's nothing I can do, but I, my heart feels for you. And that's all somebody needs. So, and, and the word you use, offer. T take offers off the, you're not offering anything right now. You're just talking to people. That's all you're doing. No offers. How's things? What's on your mind? What's your biggest challenge? Do you want some help with that? There's no offer there. Just questions. Yeah. How's that? Thanks, Rich. Uh, thanks, Danielle, for saying it's good to be immersed in this community again. Yeah, thank you. We have an amazing community here. And I really recommend you get into the community we have, if you're not in it already, the Serve, Lead, Serve Facebook group. I've had to be really tight in that group. Uh, I know this from, I have five years of running a Facebook group and the only way you can have a really powerful coaching, a Facebook group, particularly with coaches in it, is that you really create firm boundaries. Uh, I gave a, a list of really clear guidelines, like, you know, don't post cat photos, um, but, but also things like, you know, this is not a place to talk about the latest advice about COVID-19. There are experts out there. This is not a place to post your latest LinkedIn article. And, and I set the filters up. So if people do post, I have to approve it first. I got about 45 posts right now that people have been, just haven't paid attention and, and they're, they're posting all that stuff. And so I'm really curating this. I am sharing stuff each day, but there's an amazing community in there that you can connect with offline and friends you can reconnect with. Thanks, Danielle. Oh, hey, Caroline, nice to see you here. Um, uh, what are your best strategies for working from home with your family and being able to stay focused and serve the way that you do? Well, I've done this for years. I've done this for years. I'm fortunate I have a place that I can get to. Um, but years ago, I did a, um, uh, an interview somewhere on YouTube. It might be around. It was Mothers Who Coach or something. It was some phrase like that. And the number of mothers I had in my community who said, I would sometimes, I would be coaching from inside the closet because it was the only place I could get it. I see you, Alison. Um, it's the only place I could get away from the noise and, and the hustle and bustle of the kids. Well, some of us might be doing that right now. Um, I, I've loved watching Seth Meyers, who, you know, these talk show hosts. Seth did his first uh, episode of his show once he was, uh, uh, um, what do you call it, isolated uh, from, from the hallway and got all this feedback. The echoing sound is awful. You've got no makeup. You're faded out. It's like, we're all making it up. We're all trying it out. So don't worry, you'll make mistakes. I'm, I'm surprised my kids haven't burst in because normally they do because they like being on camera and they like interrupting me. And I'm okay with that. It's just I make it this joke with my clients and we all get it. Um, and I'd create some, some space. You know, one of the things we're doing, Monique and I, all those theories about 
how much screen time you'll allow your kids, it's gone out the window. You know what? This will be a moment in their life when they got more screen time than in the past. Anyone <laughs> broken their boundaries on screen time for their kids? Yeah, and I'm okay with that. It's one of those things that I, I have to do certain things to make sure I can be there working with my clients, building my business, as well as being there for my kids. Um, so no magical answers. We have to work this one out one step at a time. But those are, those are some of the things I've done. Um, yeah. Caroline, any thoughts on that? Oh, hey, Rich. <laughs> um, you know what? It's not so much that they're younger and interrupting. It's um, just more of the scheduling and staying focused on all of what comes in. And then the prioritizing, I suppose, because um, now mine Let me ask you a question, all... Caroline. Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. That feeling you said, all this stuff coming in, the prioritizing, all these things you have to do. Yeah. Tell me. Is that a new feeling? Is that something new to this moment in time? Or if you're honest, is that a feeling that you have on a regular basis, whatever's going on? That is a feeling I have on a regular basis. Right. <laughs> Thanks. Right. Yes. <laughs> this is a distinction I call re real problems versus recurring problems. And so if you, if, I, if you guys haven't seen it, I wrote something I called the playbook for coaching in challenging times. If you go to my Facebook feed, there's a couple of posts where I tell you about it. Uh, one of them I put the direct link in and one of them you can just post a comment and I'll, I'll send it to you. Or join that Facebook group I talked about, it's in there. And I, it's, it's about 10 distinctions to help you thrive in, in these challenging moments. And one of them I realized two weeks ago, I feel overwhelmed, I've got so much to do, I've got more people to serve than ever before, I'm trying to create more value, I've got these 7 a.m. calls, I've got all these things on my plate, I feel overwhelmed. The weekend's coming up. I've got to tell Monique, I can't be with the kids and you this weekend. And I realized I always have that feeling. It's just how I show up in the world. And so it's a recurring problem. That's not about what's really happening out there. That's just my brain trying to make it feel real. This is a recurring problem. So how would I coach someone who felt overwhelmed? Well, I've done it for years. I used to help them. I've learned every time management strategy under the sun. I used to teach them all. But what I discovered, if you give a really busy person a better way to manage their time, they get really good at managing their time for about two weeks. And then they've discovered they're better at putting more stuff on their plate now. You just help mm -hmm. them expand their plate. Mm -hmm. So the 80-20 rule has helped me the best. What are the 20% of things that I do that have 80% of my results? Who are the 20% of my clients who I love the most, who excite me and inspire me the most? What are the 20% of the things that I do at home that energize me and, and help me to re recuperate, bring energy back into me? And I make it as small as possible. So I've got one or two or three things that I'm doing each day. And I don't worry about the to-do list any longer. So I'd have a look at that and I'd ask yourself, because you're a great coach, how would I coach someone else around this? Because we can't do it for ourselves. So either, either ask your coach or just ask yourself, how would I coach someone else? Or, or Here's another tool I use with all of my clients. I call it WWRD. What would Rich do? <laughs> Just ask yourself, what would Rich do in this situation? Then you go and do that. It doesn't matter whether you're right. It's not that I have the right answer. It's just that you get out of your own head. What would Rich do? Or what would my hero do? Well, she would do this. Okay, go do that. Doesn't matter if you're right. Thank you. Thanks, Caroline. That's a powerful distinction, you guys, uh, recurring problems versus uh, real problems. Okay, I'm, I'm going to scroll down to the bottom now and see what we've got in here. Uh, thanks to those of you who shared the name of the Facebook group. Uh, thanks, Sylvia. Um, thanks, Kelly. DTK says he misses hugs. Yeah, I feel you, man. <laughs> Amina says real people suck. <laughs> I, I hear you, Amina. <laughs> Virtual people all the time, right? Okay, cool. Um, let, let's do this. Um, let, let me ask you to do this. In this moment, um, would you... Oh, thanks, uh, Charmaine, for posting the, the um, playbook I created. In this moment, would you post an insight you've had from anything that's come up so far? What, one, post an insight, be concise. And then two, post an action, a single tiny step you're going to take. One single insight and one single action.
Um, Amy, while they're doing that, you say, I have a question about doctors. What's your question, Amy? You can unmute and say it out loud. Good morning. Thanks, hey, Rich. Give, give me a wave, Amy, so I can find you on my screen. I've got so many people on my screen here. Um, keep waving. I'm, I'm waving. <laughs> okay, okay. I've got to go through like three screens of videos right now. Oh, there you are. Gotcha. You're on my first screen. Okay, Amy, tell awesome. me this thing about doctors. Yeah. Okay. So I've coached a number of doctors privately in the past. And my question today is um, I love them so much. And I have a few of them that are close friends of mine and really want to serve them more deeply right now. <clears throat> and I've created a, a group that resembles one in the States. <clears throat> it's a peer group. So it'd be a little bit different than what I've offered before as far as group coaching goes. My question is, I think I actually already have the answer to it <laughs> um, because of what you've been, how you've been answering questions, Rich. Yeah. Uh, but my question was in the thread there, how can I reach more doctors to let them know about this group that I've created for them? And I realized that I was coming from a place of lack, thinking um, I can't connect with enough doctors before I want to launch this program. And I need to think about, I can connect with a lot of doctors and let them know about this program and maybe just offer my support to them before I even tell them about the program. I don't know, whatever comes first. Yeah, there's, there's no maybe to that. And, and the clue earlier on is, how can I connect, connect to more doctors? Take out the word more, yeah. singular. Who's one doctor I know that might get value from this? Uh, and, and, and forget about the program. Th th that's just something that you have a menu that at some point, if someone says, how can I get more of this? You can say, well, there's this three ways. You can, you can have a, a one-off session with me. You can join a small group I've created or you can get some coaching for the next 90 days. Th that comes later. Think of one doctor and how can you serve them? Uh, this the next piece I'm about to say is not the truth. It's a thought that I have and, and I'm not attached to being right. My, I remember once I had a famous parenting coach get in touch with me and said, Rich, my books have sold millions of copies. I've been on these top TV, t TV shows and, and I, I don't seem to get any clients. And, and I said, look, I haven't had a chance to even review your stuff yet or look at anything, but I'm a parent right now. I have two little kids and I'm overwhelmed and the thought of having parenting coaching when my time is so limited, actually just, I can't even get my head around that. It's just, it's just too much for me. And the, so for doctors, I'm wondering right now how many of them, the thought of joining a group coaching program is just, they can't think about right now. And all they can think about is, um, I'm worried about, have I got PPE? Um, how do I protect my kids when I come back home at night? Um, I, I'm worried for my own health and safety. I've got two patients who are in critical condition. What will happen if they get sick? That's all they're thinking about. What they need if they get in a conversation with you is, oh, I'm left with a sense of clarity. I have a bit more confidence than I had a moment earlier. Or I've got one thing I can do at nine o'clock tomorrow morning to help me, to help my clients. That's it. Make it as simple as possible. Go out and serve them. Don't worry about what's on offer. At some point, some of them might say, I, I need more help. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um... Yeah, I know that one of the biggest things they need right now is calm, like period, if that's all I offered. <laughs> great. And, and uh, the clarity and the confidence, great. Interesting that a few and months... How many doctors have you worked with in the past? Uh, five or six. Great. So what if you got on video every day and you made a one minute video about something that doctors do that gets in their own way? Something that doctors don't do that they really could, that could change everything. Something that helps anyone to have a, a, a modicum more calm than they had a moment before, but make it for doctors. Mm -hmm. 60 seconds a day. Um, if you guys are not parents, you'll never have heard of this guy. There's a guy called Mo Willems. He writes the Gerald and Piggy books. Julia knows what I'm talking about. And uh, Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus. Awesome little books. You won't have heard of them unless you're a parent. Mm -hmm. Every day at, I think, 10 a.m. his time, he gets on for an hour and teaches little kids how to draw cartoons. He's got this enormous audience. Now, he already had a big audience. I'm not, I'm not worried about whether you grow an audience. 
create something of value for these people and start to share it one doctor at a time. And, and, and I'm saying 60 seconds because who's got more time than that right now to really think if you're a doctor and you're working on the front lines, especially one person at a time on video at a time, those videos over time will become your intellectual capital that at some point might become your intellectual property. Don't even worry about that. What's one insight I've got that I can share that might serve this community. It might turn out you do a series of 10 of these and you're done. It might turn you, you do it for the next 90 days. Who knows? One person at a time. Uh, uh, remember the bracelet that I give out to some people in my community it says serve and create. Who can I serve? What can I create? Sounds like fun. Thanks. Yeah, that's beautiful. It's beautiful. All right. We're almost at time. Let me have a look at the messages I'm getting. Um, thank you for the private messages some of you are sending me. Thank you, Jessica. Um, Luke, it's great to see you here, man. <clears throat> um, yeah, great insight, Sylvia. <clears throat> uh, 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 Mina's got um, a great point. She is a physician. Um, she says 25% uh, of doctors in the UK are already in self-isolation. So what, what's going on there? <clears throat> Where can you serve there? Slow down the speed up, yeah. Uh, oh, Jermaine, I love that. I saw you here. Hey, Jermaine. Um, she says I, she just launched an internal wellness program. Um, I love that. Jermaine works in an organization. She, she serves the, the, some of the top leaders and has created something that will really serve them. And so I, I would think, Jermaine, too, how can you make that simple? Who's got time to digest lots of information right now? Where can you take the 10 steps in this internal wellness program and make a one minute video on each of those 10 steps? Break it down into really bite sized things for people that they can, they can take in. Oh, that's great. Um, uh, Jermaine, you also said those three questions with no offers, I'll post this on our company intranet. Again, think, think, slow it down. You know, your company intranet, I've got no doubt has blown up right now with people stressed about this, the new product they're selling, the service that's going here, the client and customer is just canceled. I wouldn't post anything on the intranet. I'd slow it down. I'd talk to one person and say, hey, every day at lunchtime in this room, I'm gonna be there for anybody who wants to talk. If you come along to that conversation, you'll leave with a sense of clarity, a little bit more confidence than a moment before, and one tiny step you can take at nine o'clock tomorrow morning. I'll be in this room every lunchtime. Make a big sign, put it on the, on the door. Speak to one person, get one person in. When, tell them if you, this is valuable, come back, tell one more person. One person at a time. Forget mass marketing or intranet, intranet marketing right now, it's always, one conversation at a time. Nice job, hey, that's great. <clears throat> um, hey, Michael Hegarty, it was nice to see you here. Just get out there, I'm as important as, a, as any of the services out there. You are, Michael, and your services are important <clears throat> for your people. Excuse me, so, so, so don't hold back. Um, Okay, I, I, I'll hit download afterwards and I'll read through all the comments on here. Um, I love seeing the insights you guys are sharing. Um, uh, Julia says, um, Rich, you live your talk. Well, it, it, to be candid, yes and no, right? I've wanted to work out at the start of the day, every day for the last two weeks, Julia, and I haven't. I got on my rowing machine once and I ran around with the kids yesterday in the garden but I'm not doing what I want to be doing as much as I, as I want to. Um, I, I, in 4PC, my community of leaders, the distinction we're using this year, we, we met up in, early, in February and I brought this distinction in, dooby dooby doo. Uh, it was the only way I could describe it, dooby dooby doo. Uh, that, that we get caught up in the doing and the being is all that counts. And, and being is so much more powerful than doing. Well, of course, we teach what we most need to learn. And yesterday, one of my clients sent me a little video message and said, hey, Rich, I see you're in such an action out there. Are you missing where you could be reflecting on how are you being, who are you being? And I, I immediately, my, my, I started to write the text to reply to her. And I caught myself. If you're replying quickly, you're, you're, you're in reaction mode. And I took a, an hour or two to reflect and realized, yeah, she's right in some ways. I am too focused on doing right now. And I'm taking time to really reflect on being. Where can I be? I spent the, almost all the day yesterday being with my kids. 
Uh, it wasn't perfect. We did some stuff that was fun and some stuff that the plan I had <laughs> didn't even work. Uh, uh, Monique posted a, uh, took a video of me teaching PE to the kids. I, I don't know how to teach activities and exercise for my kids. I, I was teaching the PE class I was taught when I was a kid 40 years ago. So, you know, uh, thanks for sharing what you shared. And I want to just make it real that, that I'm human. I'm making all sorts of mistakes. Uh, I forgot to only turn my head that way. So that, that messed up bit of my hair is showing to you guys right now. Um, thank you guys for the private messages I'm, I'm reading. Uh, <laughs> Holly says, same workout outfit every day in the morning the last 10 days. Um, yeah, me too. I know that one. I, I think if I put the workout outfit on, I'll work out. And it doesn't always seem to work that way. All right, gang. Um, we're at the top of the hour. Um, thank you, guys. I'm sending you lots of love. Same time next week. But get into that Facebook group in the meantime. Let's all unmute at the same time because it feels really good when you're so alone to hear a lot of energy being sent around the world. I love you, gang. Love you, guys. Love you, guys. Love you, guys. Bye. 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 <laughs> you Thank you. Thank you. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank you. Good Bye. Bye. Bye.